Welcome to the Kiefer's Hot Rod Shop YouTube channel. I'm Nick Kiefer. In this installment, we're going to look at the build of the floor structure for the cage of this Nova. We'll take a look at some of the bins that had to be made, as well as how I measured and notched the tubing. So let's check it out, and we're going to start out taking a look at how I made the 6A and 6B front cross member bars. What I did is I matched the angle of either side of that rear cross member and made these. So the inner frame rails will be welded to this rear cross member at basically on these marks here and they'll run forward and those will mount off of the those main frame rails. So these just have to be notched um, so that they line up with the same at the same width so that curve matches front to rear and then I can make everything connect with the rocker bars and, and inner frame rails uh, nice and level and straight I cut a couple tubes to make the inner frame rails uh, like these two parallel tubes on this floor structure and now I'm going to notch them and later we'll get ready to uh, mount them up to the number one bar I bent earlier. So you want to use uh, some cutting and grinding oil or some kind of good cutting lubricant when you do this and I've got this hand drill and low range, but I also give it a uh, real low trigger, um, low speed. As this thing, as this hole saw wears out, um, it kind of likes a lighter pressure and higher speed. Um, but when they're sharp and new, taking it slow and pushing it with, with some good uh, force seems to make the nicest cut. So the tail end is real tricky, it's not like to cut a lot. You kind of have to keep light pressure on it. And just kind of keep it from catching like that. There you go. And we'll clean the edges all up and deburr the inside. Um, I've got a round file that works nicely for that. I like to use this little pick here to get in there and pull the piece out that gets stuck in the belt saw. Boop. To the pile of all the other ones. Cool. I deburred the outside of that notch with the uh, belt sander here and I even polished the inside of the notch with this drum sander attachment on the die grinder. This is a inch and a half size but it really works perfectly for the one and five h tubing. Um, I think the outside diameter is a little over one and a half so whatever it is it works great. Use the half round file to uh, clean up the inside a little bit. And now I'm going to polish this with some sandpaper and it'll be ready to fit up. What I'm doing currently is notching the tow bars to fit onto the main frame rails. And I know that the main frame rails are going to be centered on this number one bar uh, 22 inches on center. So 11 from the center line on either side. And what I've done is measured out this driver's side uh, 6A tow bar. And I measured it out. I made it just a little wider. But I've made sure that the bend starts 
are on the same line. I've measured where the center line is going to be and established that on both of these tubes. And then from there, I measured 13 16 of an inch over to make that tall line, which will be the edge of the 1 and 5 8 notch in this tube that will fit onto these. So to set this up in the notcher, um, I've measured ahead of time, but I made sure I had enough straight to be captured in the notcher appropriately. And what I'll do is line the whole saw up with the side of this and I need to verify that this piece is level in the notcher. What I'm doing is placing this angle 90 degree ruler against the notcher and holding it level with the shaft of the notcher and kind of like how I do in the tube bender against the die I'm checking to make sure that that tube is parallel with the angled ruler this looks like it's pretty straight so you know, once again checking myself here and it looks like it's pretty good so now I want to make sure that the hole saw on the notcher is lined up correctly um, again we've got our center cut mark so if I was using a hole saw with like a pilot bit that's where I'd aim and then I've measured the distance the radius from it and the edge of the cutter looks like it's right about on it. Um, I think it'd be a good idea to give it a little extra room. Sometimes the whole saws can get a little crazy. So I'll pull it out just a bit. And that way, you know, I'll have room to kind of polish this in. So let's just re-verify straightness here. That actually looks really good. So, uh, once again, I'm leaving myself a little bit of uh, a little bit of room, really good and tight, so it doesn't move around on us. And uh, definitely uh, always use the good cutting lubricant. I like to get it on there where it'll kind of catch the blade later. Let's, uh, let's give it a shot. Make sure it's seated. You want to avoid getting anything too hot, I'll just wear your tools out prematurely. I'm about to clean it all up. I mean, the belt sander and using the die grinder make it make it really nice and, and ready to fit to that main frame rail.
that. Now it's time for this guy. And after some work, that really starts making the inside nice and smooth and straight. So let me get it cleaned up, and I'll use that half round file to clean the inside. Got it cleaned up. Notches to the tube pretty nicely. And line it up. Line these two marks up. And it's just good to go through and kind of check stuff. Look down there, and we're pretty much looking at the center of that mark, uh, more or less. Um, I've just kind of eyeballed it here, so I'll measure it out and make sure everything's good to go. Make sure I don't need to grind any extra off or anything like that. And, uh, and then uh, on to the next one. Alright, cool. Seeing the 22 on center mark. Right through the middle of that little piece of tube there. And got everything lined up on the ruler. Um, to the dimension that needs to be. And... Um, looking good so I think that should work and next I'll need to lay all five of these tubes out and um, make all the diagonals and all that and looks like looks like we're on a good start here all right I'm working on getting everything set up to start welding everything together um, I've got a few jack stands here that I'm using which isn't ideal, but with some shimming and these adjustable jack stands, I can get everything true and level using the uh, dial angle finder. Um, I've, uh, I've got the tubing all cleaned up and polished where the first welds are gonna be. And I also drilled holes for gas expansion that happens inside the tubing when it's welded. So everything's cleaned out with acetone and cleaned off and ready to go here. So I'll show y'all uh, how I set it up. I'm gonna use some tape and um, a 90 degree uh, speed angle and some other things and just keep measuring back and forth, uh, cross measuring and and once again, making sure those angles are where I want them. And I'll get it as close as possible. So I've got everything leveled out. Um, I use the square just to make sure everything's at a 90 on these. And you have to check inside and out because since this uh, cross member has these angled sections where the main frame rails attach um, it'll tell you if you if your angles are tight on the inside and loose on the outside of both or vice versa that means that that isn't drooped straight down so I went back and forth with that a lot um, I measured the width in the front to make sure it matched the rear and I've also got this uh, piece here that's just floating and I've notched it to the appropriate width and um, after I tack these on I'll be moving it to the front and running a strap around either side um, on either side of that to hold it all rigid and make sure that spacing is maintained but um, I'm going to throw a couple tacks on the uh, inner frame rails going on to the number one rear cross member here and um, and then I'll have to remeasure everything. I, uh, I held a straight edge across this cross member, this long one that I used to make sure it was straight when 
when I bent it um, that these two flats were straight. Made sure that was level, level to that piece of square tubing. And then I made sure these two frame rails were level also. So um, it took a bit of adjusting, but I got everything seemingly pretty true. Um, after I tack it, I'll just have to kind of look over everything. Hopefully I don't have to break the tacks, but if I do, and now's the time to do it. Uh, this is kind of the foundation of the whole thing. Something you have to keep in mind is that a concrete floor, as flat as it may seem, is not perfectly flat. And also, jack stands, especially old ones like these, uh, well, hell, probably any of them, uh, aren't all the exact same height. So you just have to measure everything and, and use the level. Um, you know, I've got plywood uh, pieces and a couple slats under that one just to get it right and also use little pieces of filler rod and stuff. Um, that's where the adjustable ones come in. It's, just, it's always good to take the time to make sure, uh, especially when you're building your foundation, that everything is good to go uh, and square and true. And, you know, it's not cheating to make pieces like this that fit between the tubes and just space them out appropriately. I mean, anything that helps is, is good. But um, I'm going to stick a couple tacks on here and then uh, make sure all my angles and levels and planes are, are right and um, go from there. All right, well, I've got it tacked up here. And I actually kind of went back and forth um, on both sides of, of each tube to, to square this thing up. So when you, when you weld on one side, it's, it's going to draw that angle uh, inward, kind of towards the weld. So what I was doing is, is measuring angle and kind of cross-measuring uh, with the measuring tape um, to make sure uh, everything ended up square and, and uh, perpendicular here. So I ended up going back and forth side to side a couple times on both sides and uh, ended up with, you know, a little bit of a weld on there. But as I kind of populate this thing with tubes like the tow bars and, and diagonals uh, and especially the X in the middle, it's going to get a lot more rigid and as I tack those it's gonna hold hold true so I might I might throw a couple more tacks on the tops of those uh, two joints but otherwise um, looking pretty good here here's my setup in the front with that strap holding the tubes in is that piece in the middle holds them out to the desired spacing um, and I've kind of I had to play with the uh, those adjustable jack stands a bit, just kind of make sure everything's real level as I got everything tacked up and settled in and square. So it's a bit of work, but it's necessary at this point. And I'm looking forward to adding, adding some more tubes to this and um, going on to some of the next steps. I'm going to go ahead and, and clean these tubes up uh, and get them ready for those 6A and 6B tow bars and um, you know just keep measuring everything and, and set the height of those jack stands upright so that I can get everything square and level. Cool I have the 6A and 6B tow bars on now they're uh, tacked up I ran a little bit of a bead just kind of to pull them forward after I tacked them up a little bit just to get them just right, and they turned out pretty good. Um, once I jammed the uh, rocker bars and all the uh, diagonals in there, I think it's all going to work out pretty great. Um, I might need to flip the thing over and weld a little bit on the bottom um, just kind of to make them a little more level, but they're... Uh, they're pretty good, so I'm happy with it, and uh, 
they mimic the rear cross member pretty nicely. I'm just going to continue to populate this floor structure with tubes. I polished the tubing and uh, cleaned it inside and out, um, as well as the outside of these main frame rails uh, before I tacked everything together. You can also see my mark there. Um, I've calculated a measurement from the rear cross member to the back of the 6A bar here and um, <clears throat> marked that and I kept measuring it when I uh, tacked it but uh, before I put it on there I drilled more holes uh, for uh, gas expansion um, when everything's welded when these are welded to the plates uh, that mount them in the body um, that'll obviously be sealed off so gas has to have a place to go inside of the tube um, <clears throat> I'm creating kind of a network with that I've drilled holes through here and you know pretty much every tube that goes on will will weld around a, a, a hole just just for that um, purpose but after that I taped I taped them on using some of this green masking tape and shimmed these uh, jack stands up to get everything nice and level and uh, went ahead and tacked them on and uh, <clears throat> after I initially tacked them I, I measured them for uh, level and um, kind of fore aft uh, as compared to the number one rear cross member bar and just to make sure that everything stayed square and I'll continue to do so throughout the process as I get more tubes in um, it's just good to go back and check everything as you go to make sure you end up with a nice square uh, structure it kind of you know it'll pay off uh, as you go forward putting the main hoop and a pillar bars and stuff in um, it's just nice if you know all the measurements and everything's level and even but here it is looking good and looking forward to uh, sticking some more bars in this thing so I'll keep you posted on that all right so I'm making my diagonal piece here and this one I know is going at a 45 degree angle uh, just because that's how I designed the floor structure of this car um, so it kind of makes things really simple, but as far as, you know, calculating angles and all that. But one thing that's kind of complicated with this piece, and I've already made my first notch here, uh, clean it all up, the bird and stuff. So all I have to do for that end is uh, polish the tubing, uh, both pieces, and clean it all up and get everything ready to weld. But <clears throat> since this piece is elevated... This tube creates a plane with the main frame rail here, but it intercepts a different plane where it joins with this. So what I've done is a calculation to figure out about what this angle is going to be, consider making a triangle um, that's level with the main frame rail here and goes up to the height that this tow bar um, elevates to and I'm going to use that compared with um, points on this notch to make to make that notch um, with that twist in it that it's that's going to be required to make these tubes fit together. One thing I've done to kind of foolproof the process is draw these arrows. And when I'm notching a tube that's got um, notches at two different angles, I like to draw those arrows so I know that um, off of straight in comparison to this, like straight across in that manner, this end needs to turn this way and then the opposite end needs to turn the opposite way. So when I'm setting it up in the notcher, I'll know 
um, without guessing which way to go. It kind of gets complicated because sometimes when you put a tube in the notcher, you lose reference of uh, the position of the piece. So what I've done, I'll show you some of the math here. Calculated this angle, so I know the point or the the plane that it needs to intersect with is an inch higher than that um, main frame rail that this notched end is is going to attach to, and the point away from that um, main frame rail is. 11 and a half inches on center. So I just made a right triangle, triangle and, and calculated the um, angle using arc tangent, which uh, considers the opposite side from the angle as well as the adjacent side from the angle, and calculated 4.969, you know, so on degrees. So I'm gonna say, you know, that's so close to five degrees. Uh, that's, you know, once again, the resolution of my equipment is about a degree, maybe a half degree. And um, I'm gonna to need to, to clean up the notch anyway with the die grinder. So I just want to go ahead and, and cut it at five and, and that should get me pretty close. I've also calculated the outside length that this needs to have. So what I do is after the first notch, I measure from that outside part to where I've made this line. And when I set it up in the tube notcher, I'll be able to cut it to the length it needs to be for the desired um, dimensions, basically. So I'll set it up and, and show you how I do that. All right, so the first thing I like to do when I'm making a notch like this um, is line the hole saw up with the mark I made. Um, this Sharpie mark, um, you know, obviously it has a, a width to it, and I've made this mark so that I want my cut pretty much right in the middle of that. Um, so when I line the hole saw up and all that uh, I like to look down and see what you're gonna cut and honestly it's it's not a bad idea just to leave a little more tubing especially on a really crucial piece just because by the time you uh, polish everything up and by the time the hole saw gets done with what it's doing you it's kind of better to be safe than sorry material wise and and it tends to eat up a little more than than you'd think but then the second thing I do in this case I'm measuring kind of from the uh, extremes of this notch here and um, this uh, level dial actually has this notch that works kind of well but I've set it up here at five degrees um, and once again you know I'm taking that angle kind of down this plane and once again turning it oppositely of these arrows so now that I have this in here I know that the notch needs to be in this direction and this notch needs to be the opposite direction so kind of leaned off counter or I mean uh, clockwise in this condition in this case so once again you know, I can kind of measure off of this notch and look at the angle and try to get it set up at five degrees here. And that'll, at the very least, just give me a good starting place. Um, it's a pretty complex piece, really. There's a, there's a lot of geometry going on, and this is kind of a simple approach to making this. So it might take a little fitting, um, you know, with that die grinder and and all that but this should this should get me in the ballpark um, and then I can fit it up nicely with all those other tools but I'll go ahead and make the notch and deburr it and we'll see how it fits up all right 
checking up the fit here. And I want to get it nice and settled on that first cut. And then slide it into the next. And it doesn't look bad. Looks like um, just needs a little touched up out of there. You can tell, just kind of look for where it's real tight. And obviously, um, that's going to be where you want to take a little out just to perfect your notch. But otherwise, I think I'm headed in the right direction here. So a little bit of polishing, and I think it'll be awesome. So show you all after I do that. All right, got it fit up pretty dang nice. And um, now I just need to clean everything up and work on... Uh, maybe tacking it in next so um i still need to put my rocker bars in which uh it'll be real close to this um it might overlap it a little bit so i kind of want to check first uh, to see if i just need to notch the tip of this a little bit but um looking good and i'll uh, continue to check dimensions and angle um you know as i get closer to uh, being able to tack it on also, I, I want to drill um, expansion, gas expansion holes where it sits on the tubing um, so that uh, I don't get a, an explosion when I try to weld this on. But looking good, I'll keep you updated. All right. I made this one using the same technique um, with that five degree uh, angle in my uh, notch. Um, rotationally compared to that one and just touch it up with the die grinder a little bit and it's fitting pretty dang nicely and one awesome thing about these being 45 degrees is you know this guy uh, obviously fits right in there um, and uh, it's a great way to verify everything's good to go all right cool I'm starting to get these uh, diagonal gussets welded in. Um, I got them all tacked up and I'm, uh, I'm actually welding the uh, outside edge of them because the rocker bars will overlap them a little bit and I'm going to notch those to, to fit over these. So I've got the top outside edges actually uh, welded up but this, uh, this line here um, is where the inside of the rocker bar is going to go. So it needs to be notched over that just a little bit. And there'll even be a diagonal uh, going from this corner to that corner also. So I wanted to weld that on while I can get to it. Uh, consequently, I welded the back side so that the tube doesn't pop off. Because um, if it just has a couple tacks on it and you start to weld one side, it can lift that tube and bust those tacks. And and then everything's in a really bad position. So I just want to be careful about that. And um, everything's looking pretty symmetrical. I keep checking uh, distances and angles and all that kind of stuff. And uh, it's looking pretty good. So um, I'm going to flip it over and weld the bottoms of these uh, kind of down in there. Um, and then uh, flip it back over right side up and fit my fit my rocker bars so get everything cleaned up and polished too and um you know obviously drill my gas expansion holes and deburr them and all that kind of stuff all right so i've got a rocker bar fitted up here and i had to notch it a little bit to fit this diagonal gusset uh, to fit up with it and remember that's why I went ahead and did that weld because this is going to fit over that so instead of um, notching it with the uh, the tube notcher I went ahead and just used the die grinder with the inch and a half um, sanding drum on it and I've got my dimensions all marked out here and I just kind of worked it um, going back and forth to the die grinder until it it fit in there how I wanted it. So it turned out pretty nice, but I have a um, 
diagonal uh, floor diagonal that I need to put from that corner to this corner. So um, not quite ready to weld this in yet, um, but I've, I've got this mostly fitted. Um, and I think I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. So uh, I, fl I was flipping the floor structure here over earlier and noticed that I think it was this side. Yeah, this side um, was just kind of clocked wrong. It, it was not level with that other side. And I kind of, <clears throat> you know gave it a little muscling and I, I tried to see if I could just get it to, to settle into place and wasn't able to and I ended up I went ahead and cut the welds off of this joint here and um, it set everything up That's this what, is the point where it really is worth doing those things if you need to cut something apart and reposition it just to get it right it's worth it because down the road if that was off you know, who knows what else would have had to, you know, be kind of made to fit or what, what I'd have to do to, to fix that once I get everything, you know, all the diagonals and stuff tacked up and fitted. I uh, would have thrown all that off. And by the time you get the car ready for a chassis like this, it's pretty flimsy. I mean, you have to think... At that point, the floor's coming out. You just have a basic shell, rockers, quarters, roof, cowl, which is sturdy enough to sit on its own, but, you know, it's pretty easy to, to tweak something like that. And then, you know, your car's not square. It's, it's uneven. It might even load the tires unevenly, and the doors might not shut, et cetera, et cetera. So... While you're at the fundamental stage of building the floor structure, it's just worth it to get everything just right. You just want to try to keep everything nice and, and symmetrical. Um, obviously, obviously in something like this, the driver's sitting off to the left side of the car and say the battery's mounted off to the right side of the car. And there, there are certain things that are obviously are not symmetrical, but um, considering you know, uh, being able to square everything by cross measuring, um, uh, cutting, cutting pieces is, is nicer when they're the same on either side. Um, you kind of have a reference to go off of, especially when you get into making a pillar bars and stuff like that. It's nice when, you know, even if you mess up your first bend and notch, if you get it right on one side, you kind of have something to go off of for the other side. So, it's really worth it at this point to get everything symmetrical and level and square. Careful, you want to weld things um, in in a smart manner, um, where you're not just kind of randomly, you know, putting the heat to it here and there. You want to be methodical and do things symmetrically. Once again, um, sometimes it's good to go opposite directions on opposite sides of tubing. You know, especially for a lot of this um, kind of initial tubing that just kind of avoids things getting pulled off of uh, straight. All right, so I'm fitting up my diagonal reinforcement bars right now. And it's just a really long uh, process of measuring uh, right triangles, considering what plane the triangle is in, notching accordingly. So what's a good way to go about this is to go ahead and establish a pair of opposite notches. And since this rocker bar is removable, it's good to start with the notch for the number one rear cross member and the 6A um, tow bar here. And so what you're want, going to want to do is first get this 
diagonal fitted between those with the appropriate notch and then and with the appropriate angle and just before you have this long notch in just go ahead and make it so that the tube butts up against this tube just side by side and the same in the front and that's a great way to start because what you can then do is figure out um, how far across the tube you need to notch for the other tubes so as you can see this one approximately halfway across this notch starts for this uh, 2A main frame rail here and you're going to want to do that notch and make sure you don't cut too much away but also notch for this tube at the same time um, because it's the same angle if these are parallel and this is this is just in general um, for this kind of uh, fitment whenever you have two tubes in parallel the notches are going to be parallel so equal and opposite notches um, at the at 180 degrees from each other so if that notch is straight up and down this will be straight up and down now where you get complicated is when you have tubes that are out of plane so it happens that this gusset is actually in plane with this tube um, as you can see you can kind of make a flat surface the 6a bar is blocking it but these are all in plane um, so you don't have to worry about angling that notch off for that tube but keep in mind that this is out of plane so this tube is a little bit lower than if it were in plane with all of these tubes just a little bit and something like that you can you can calculate and and try to set up in the notcher but um, it's not a bad idea just to, to notch it a little shy, give yourself a little extra material, and then fit the tube in uh, using a die grinder. So it kind of depends on which notch you start with um, when you come to like a, you know, three, three tube node like this. Um, I did this particular one a little bit differently than how I just explained it. I actually fit it to that um, angled gusset tube in, in, in the rear joint first because I had already done this one. Um, this tube was cut or notched with that long notch and... Oh, I'm sorry, no. With this short notch and a short notch here first. Even though none of this notch still exists for this tube, it's just a good way to set the tube up so you can measure the depths that these notches have to have. Now, you can measure or calculate all of the angles. Um... You can even uh, set these other bars up and put pieces of tape about the size of the bar. If that um, kind of is the way you think, you can you can do pieces of tape, measure the angles, estimate you know how notches are going to have to interface and all that. But again, I made the these. Um, almost perpendicular notches. I think it's about on this chassis it's about 13 um, and a half degrees. 13 and two thirds I think it is calculated out. And then I notched it to these two parallel notches and 
and then slid everything towards this bar as I notched it for it. Now, that being said, um, maybe if you are really careful and really precise with your measurements and math and all that, you could um, nail it uh, with just a minimal cleanup. But something this precise, you're gonna wanna cut away a little less material than ultimately needs to be cleared for the notch because you're just gonna need to go in with a grinder or the die grinder or a combination thereof to really get this kind of stuff fitted up perfectly. So I've started this video in the process of fitting this. So you can see I've made these marks here um, and this is the target landing spot for this tube. And you also wanna make sure, you know, your, your rear tube is set up right where you need it because just that little bit of angle can throw off, you know, how you need to shape the tube. So, as you can see, I need to move this in, um, I don't know, three sixteenths of an inch or so. Um, but where I'm at right now, I've got a little bit of a gap back here, and I just need to trim this, kind of straighten it out more or less um, compared to this this bar. If you can, it's hard to tell. The lighting's hard on this tube, but um, I need to trim that, and I'll probably do that with a roll lock pad on a uh, three inch a three inch roll lock pad on a die grinder, and then. I'll use the uh, the drum sander, the inch and a half drum sander to touch that curve up so that it maintains the radius that it needs to mate with. But um, when you're at this point, when you're really close, fitting everything up, just look for gaps and tight spots. And gradually, it, it really pays off to do this gradually because if you go too far, you might end up with a gap that can be welded or you might not. So if you can just sneak up on it, it's really worth it and it's gonna come together really nicely. And obviously I need to polish this piece of tubing and clean it all up and everything before I weld it. But while I'm handling everything, it's honestly, it's good if it has scale and oil on it and all that, um, just so it won't start rusting uh, just from just from handling it going back and forth to the grinder and whatnot. So um, I've got this pretty much fitted up. You can see there's a little bit of a gap um, through part of it. So I might try to close that in, but you need to be careful and just kind of do one end, a one end at a time um, unless something's really far off because you don't want to get one in perfect with one end messed up. But when you have something that's really close like this, and you can you can just dial in the, the other side. Um, it's a little dangerous changing the angle of the tube as you work because it will change the joint on the other end. So if you can, you kinda wanna establish the position of the tube and then work the next tube into it. But this is a pretty specific um, circumstance here um, it's it's it is universal in a way um, but being able to move the rocker bar um, is is kind of a luxury in this case so um, that's another thing to think about when you're doing this is make it so that you don't paint yourself into a corner you know uh, do everything methodically so that it can be pulled apart and you don't have to hammer stuff into gaps and grind pieces away that don't need to be ground away just so that you can fit them in. Um, you, you kind of have to be smart about it and kind of come up with an order of events. And that can be really tricky. I mean, even if it seems simple, you know, there's so many pieces coming together here that 
it, that it's good to to have a, a plan in mind. But looking pretty good. I'm going to go over and I'm going to um, grind that away a little bit. And obviously, we're going to want to check the bottom as we go and just, you know, tighten that up and make everything line up nicely as we go okay, here. And this so. diagonal is actually the 8A and 8B, I believe. But I know the driver's side at least is 8A. Um, I wanted to show some of the math I've done um, just considering <clears throat> the distance between the the number one rear cross member and the 6A uh, tow bar here. Um, the on center distance that the diagonal needs to travel and I've calculated the angle using trigonometry and using Pythagorean's theorem I have calculated the length that that tube needs to be. Now I cut I cut the tubing instead of at 52 and just about 3 eighths of an inch I cut it at 54 and actually I ended up cutting the second one I did at 53 um, you got to keep in mind when you're notching a tube you're not necessarily notching it to its maximum dimension um, so here if you look at this one for example um, if you measure to here and that's the length of your tube you actually need a little more to make that notch where it meets the tube that it's being attached to so that's something to be careful about and it never hurts just to take a measuring tape and lay it across there and just get a rough measurement of the length of the material you, material you need but here's where um, I calculated angles so once I got this angle um, you know, this would be the 6A front cross member tow bar. This would be the rocker bar. I believe that's 7A. And this is that 45 degree uh, kind of gusset bar going to where my transmission cross member will be. And then this one at the 13.67 degree angle that matches this triangle is that diagonal reinforcement the 8a and so what i've done just to just to make the process of notching the tubing easier is calculated these angles out um, including the difference from 90 of 45 plus 13.67 Subtract that from 90, and I get 31 and a third degrees. So that made it a bit easier when it was time to set up the notcher. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of able to start at a, a spot and work my way into where it needs to be, maintaining the proper angle of the notch, which helps. So all this work ahead of time really does pay off. Um, you know, maybe maybe you prefer to uh, kind of work as you go, um, measure angles as you need. Uh, I guess arguably that could be just as efficient uh, if you work better that way. But for me, it's just worth it to do it like this and um, kind of gives me an idea um, and some numbers to double check against, against the real thing. So that's just kind of how I went about it and uh, it helped me help me get that thing kind of started so I'm gonna work on that and get it fitted up also one more tip it's always a good idea because these tubes get really complex as soon as you pull it off of the structure you can lose not only which end you're working on but what's up and what's down what's left and right so it's really it's a good idea to Take a look at what you need to do and take a Sharpie or something and just go ahead and mark 
um, where you need to trim it, you know, not a bad idea, and it can kind of give you an idea how much you need to cut, um, but once again, it's just worth putting the time in and doing this kind of stuff, because it'll save you material, it'll keep you from messing things up, I mean, <laughs> it won't, <laughs> not 100%, you can still mess anything up, and I certainly have, but this, you know, it just kind of makes it more foolproof. So don't be afraid to mark things. Heck, even if you need to get a couple different Sharpies and color code stuff, um, draw arrows and numbers, letters, you name it, just, you know, it can easily be wiped off with some acetone later. And um, it just helps tremendously when you're doing this stuff. All right, sweet. I've got the diagonal fitted up. It's looking pretty good, front and rear. I just slowly worked it in with the grinder, uh, the Rolock grinder and the die grinder with the barrel sander on it, and got it to fit in pretty nice. Bottom looks pretty good too. There's a little gap, but I don't want to grind it down anymore because it fits in there nicely. And if, if, if I grind it too much, it's going to fit loose and, and rattle around when, I've, when I'm trying to set everything up. So I'm happy with it. it. Looks good. Next, I just need to clean everything up, sand it, polish it, clean the tubing on the inside and out with acetone. And I need to drill the gas expansion holes. I believe I'm going to poke a couple into the 2A main inner frame rails here and into the rear cross member and 6A front cross member tow bars for the rocker rocker tube bars there. Uh, the so. next thing I need to fit is the center X and I'm waiting on some brackets to come in so that I can start on the cross member that goes across the middle of the frame. I've got some chromoly tabs that are bent over on the end to add rigidity and are actually called for in the SFI rules for the chassis coming and uh, once those are there I can set that cross member up and I'll be mounting the transmission to that. All right, I'm starting to fit the center X up in the floor structure here. And I already have the piece that goes all the way across from one end to another tacked in. And as you can see, I've labeled it uh, so I know which way it goes. It's, it's uh, symmetrical, so I guess it's not really terribly important, but Sometimes there's minor nuances that you just want to keep uh, in the respective places when you fit up a tube like this. But I've got that tacked in. I drilled uh, gas expansion holes on these corners. And once I fit up the final piece, I'll drill one here. I chose not to drill holes through through this part of the X that I started with. Um, just because I, I'm venting it into the main frame rails anyway, and I figure, hey, maybe it's a little stronger without the holes. Um, plenty of stress on that in, in certain uh, situations, I guess. So I'm getting it all fitted up, and I'm about to tack this piece in. And then I need to notch up the next piece and and start cleaning that up and, and getting it put in and and not forgetting to drill that hole. It's important. So the weld the last weld doesn't explode when you put the things together. So uh, the way I did this is pretty simple. Uh, I could have notched the back of these to kind of node into the rear frame 
or rear frame cross member as well but i elected not to just kind of to keep it simple and also to keep the center of the x uh kind of as far forward as i can because when the suspension separates in the car or if it's up on a lift or whatever the drive shaft is going to angle down from the transmission and that's why this is relieved in the center here so i wanted to keep the x away from the drive shaft i've done a lot of math to kind of figure out where all that stuff goes and i've given myself a range to work within with a little bit of extra room uh, just to make sure the drive shaft doesn't ever hit that obviously you don't want the drive shaft hitting anything but if it has to hit something you want it to hit the safety tube which will be mounted to this x if not uh, the main frame rails but in this case it will be mounted right about there on this x so what i've done is i've measured or calculated the distance between these two tubes and I've come up with an angle and I've done trigonometry back and forth to figure out an angle that I liked in this case and it ended up being 31 degrees and so from that I can calculate what the length needs to be which makes it nice when you when it's time to notch it um, you can use Pythagorean's theorem make a right triangle with this being the right angle here use that length and that and you can calculate this length and so when you're notching tubes like this uh, you're gonna want to measure from the short side of one to the long side of another or vice versa just depending on how your notcher is set up and then what I've also done is it's kind of taped over here, but this tube will end exactly in the middle between the two frame rails. So it's good to just kind of look at things and consider uh, how they relate to each other. And sometimes you can find a really easy way to make something and take the guesswork out. So what I've done is I've measured from my frame rail to half the distance between both of the frame rails. And I've made a mark here. And there's tape over it. It's holding the tube up so it doesn't fall on the floor while I tack it. But the inside edge of this tube where it meets this tube lines up with that mark. And so, if you think about it, this triangle, it's called an isosceles triangle when, when two sides are congruent or the same. And it makes two right triangles. So, <laughs> without any more geometry lesson here, that point needs to be right in the middle between these two frame rails. Um, Thusly, you can calculate the side length of this tube. And then you're just going to use that along with other measurements and set the notcher up appropriately. And it's another one of these tubes where you really kind of want to maybe make a mark, maybe draw an angle across it. Uh, you can do a number of things just to make sure that you notch it correctly because... This one's kind of tricky. Um, a lot of these tubes, like uh, like this one here, you know, you've got your long side and your short side, and both notches are just kind of opposite of each other, uh, you know, for lack of detail. But this one almost makes a parallelogram with how it's notched, meaning they're notched oppositely more so than call it on the same side like like this tube so that's just kind of where you can get into a pickle if you're not careful and if you're 
if you're going fast. But nonetheless, I'm going to get this tacked up and then I'm going to make and fit up that final tube and drill my uh, gas expansion hole. All right, so I'm about to notch this final tube in the X here, and this is a step I like to take. Um, it's a good idea to just kind of put the tube in place as closely as you can to where it'll finally be installed, and just visualize it, kind of take a look at it and make sure, uh, for instance, if you've got a mark for where you're gonna notch the tube, look at everything and make sure that's going to be in a good place uh, make sure it's not cut too short I guess but you know this is a good time just to look at everything and, and make sure everything's going to end up straight uh, you can at this point see where the venting hole needs to be drilled for instance this is a mark that I put on the tube that I based on the measurement from the other side, uh, just trying to make it symmetrical. This is where I want the front of this tube to line up to. So, you know, just stuff like that really helps to make sure uh, you avoid messing up at this point. And just make sure everything's going together correctly. Yeah, also yeah. keep in mind that if you do rotate a tube that's notched at an angle, the angle won't quite be perfect. If you imagine it's rotating about like this, you know, if you started to rotate it about the 2A frame rail where it's taped to. So it will slightly when it's laid down in place it'll slightly angle out more this way and you know less exaggerated so it's just a step i like to take um and once again looking at where i've made the mark it's really hard to see it kind of got wiped off but just take all this into consideration and that way you can move forward with confidence all right, so we're not quite in line here, and my mark is showing that this tube is cut just a little long. And you can also kind of tell just in how the notches don't quite line up. So I'm just gonna have to carefully take a little bit of length out of this tube and hopefully get it really close. Um, near perfect uh, with this next notch but always good to have a little extra than not enough so let me just uh, clean this up and then we'll see how it fits all right got the tube here and yep sweet get in there just right all right looks good cool so I'm going to uh, get everything cleaned up inside and out, and uh, it looks like my vent hole would be happy right, right kind of under that piece of tape. So I'm going to poke that and deburr it and get everything nice and clean and then tack this guy All in. All right. Excellent. Got the final piece of the X in. Turned out nice and straight. Got it all tacked up and ready to go. So that's going to tremendously help this thing maintain its dimensions. And it's nice to have it in here. Polished everything up, and I even remembered to drill my vent hole under the uh, joint right there. So it's all vented and uh, ready to go. And starting to really look like a thing. I still need to clean up this diagonal and um, get the rocker bars all clean and all that stuff tacked up. But I wanted to get the X in first just to hold it true while I'm working on either side. And then, uh, then I'll flip it over and 
attack the bottom. All right, so I've got it flipped over here, and what I'm doing is I'm putting the welds that go under the diagonal tubes, which I have out right now, under there uh, while I can still get to them. And I've also put tacks on the bottom of uh, the center axe and some of these other tubes just to help hold everything in place uh, while I've got it flipped over. And I'm about to flip it back over, uh, complete those welds, and then continue cleaning everything up, all the diagonals and rocker bars, and uh, stick them in there. I've got these polished on the ends and started to clean those out. And I've also been drilling my gas expansion holes where the diag diagonals and rocker bars go. Got them deburred and cleaned up and it's just about ready to Sweet. go. I've got my weld beads completed for where the diagonals are gonna sit and I'm ready to get everything cleaned up and put together. Alright, everything's all cleaned up and polished and ready to tack together. I'm going to make sure all my measurements and angles are right and go ahead and methodically tack this thing together, checking dimensions as I go. But it's looking good and shiny. Can't wait to start zapping it together. Alright, cool. Cleaned everything up, fitted it up, measured it made sure it was still square and straight and got everything tacked together so the next step will be um, I'm gonna flip it over and tack the bottom similarly to how I tack the top uh, just to make sure everything's all buttoned up and um, sturdy it looks pretty neat, measures out nice, and uh, it's looking good. Thanks for watching. I would be honored if you'd like and subscribe. See y'all again soon.